and I, he wants to say Ford, and that's fine with me. But the truth is, I can't define every car. I'm not even going to attempt to do. If the computer can calculate engine load, it can calculate. Do we agree on that? Yeah. All right. So the first step is to see if the computer is doing anything normal. That means the inputs and the logics have been established. And airflow is divided by the peak airflow, and that's the only thing we know about calculated load. I talk to a lot of people all over, and they tell me they know about calculated load. I'm thinking, why don't I know it? Why don't I know what you just told me? Because I do a lot of research. I do a lot of research with a lot of engineers. I'm going, I know that calculated load formula on every manufacturer is proprietary. So guys who say they know it don't really know it. They're kind of doing what? They're pretending. So I'm going to ask you tonight, I'm going to ask you tonight not to pretend anymore. Don't pretend you know something. You either know it or you don't. Don't Just because somebody stood in front of you and told you that, don't pretend you know it. How many people have ever put a, a, a part on a car and found out later it didn't need that part? <laughs> you don't pretend so good. You don't pretend so good. So don't pretend. I'm going to ask you to stop pretending. Don't pretend we know stuff. And I know I, I do all... I, I'm involved in, in a, like you, I, I go to class to see what I can steal, uh, learn, you know? But, and I hear people say stuff standing in front of people, and I go, how come I don't know that? How come I can't find that formula somewhere? You know, so I'm going to ask you that. Just know what you know about calculated load, and don't pretend you know anything else. Peak airflow may be adjusted for altitude, of course. We don't care about that. Nobody, even the people in the mountain, don't care for altitude adjustment. Why? Because it don't change. You live there. Your shop is there. It don't, it's not you come some morning at the bottom of the mountain, some morning you go to the top of the mountain. It don't work like that. It doesn't change. In this area, uh, where the hell am I? Jersey. I know that. God. Sea level. Yeah, there you go. I'm at sea level. Who cares what you call it? We're at sea level, and it doesn't change much. Does it change with weather? Yes, we know it changes with weather. But does it change that much? No. From day to day, does it change a half an inch? No, it really doesn't. So we know it changes. It can change. We know that's a theory part. But what was barometric pressure on the car you worked on today? 30? Ma'am, you're like better sea level than we are in Indiana. We're like... <laughs> We get like 29.3, 29.4, and the highest peak in Indiana is 400 feet above sea level, so we have a great variety. All right, so no manufacturer is going to release the formula, so let's not. Let's just admit we don't know. They don't give it to us, so let's just admit we're going to work with the number, and let's just say that if it's under 20 at idle, the computer knows how to calculate it and is doing a pretty good job of it. Any questions or complaints about that? Any, this is a discussion. You can say I disagree with you. As long as you understand I can disagree with you. So less than 20. Now, if you want to divide it like you're doing, God bless you. If you've paid enough attention, you focused exactly, you say, well, Fords are this and everything else is this, that is you've done the research for yourself. You can go home now. <laughs> Because that, that is the biggest thing I'm going to tell you all night. All right, so it's, it's not going to happen. But if it's under 20, the computer can control itself. Under 20, I go ahead. You've got to have standards. You're going to change stuff in the way you do stuff, and you've got to have standards. We sometimes call them specifications. That way we're using their standards. So when it all goes to hell in a handbasket, we can blame them. But there is no standard for cal what's calculated load at 61 miles an hour on a four-cylinder inline. Yeah, right. There, there are no huh? <laughs> yeah. So at 20 to 25, I do an action-reaction testing. Action-reaction testing. We we're very good at that. If, if I, what's your first name? Ray. Ray, that was your that was the one you used last time. <laughs> so that girl dropped that case against you. <laughs> No. <laughs> she likes a good long one. So if I step on Ray's, man, brand new shoes, <laughs> man, you got all dressed up to come here. So if, if I stomp on his foot and he yells his head hurts, what did I find out? 
something's wrong in the internal circuitry. Something's wrong. All right? But if I stop on his foot and he says, damn, my foot hurts, that's reaction test, reaction to reaction testing. And then what we have here is 20 to 25 percent, I'm going to do something. I'm going to raise RPM. Uh, uh, no, let, let's go back a step. Let's just make it more simpler than that. I'm going to open a throttle. What should RPM do? Without any spanking or coughing or sneezing, right? I mean, we really should see it, hear it, raise. What should uh, TPS voltage do? All right, APP volt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got that stuff. What should map, map, manifold absolute pressure, not the voltage in the map, but what should map do? Should go down in some type of symmetrical, however you open the throttle, motion. All right? What should timing do? The word start, the answer starts with C. So what should timing do? H. Change. It only took two letters. Wheel of fortune. Yeah, wheel of fortune. No, I, I, I actually TiVo wheel of fortune. I like that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> and that other one that comes after that. Jeopardy. That, that's insane, man. I, like at the end of the show, I'm happy I got three answers correct. I go, yeah, yeah I'm badass. I'm the man. <laughs> the other guy got like $65,000. <laughs> so I'm going to see if the computer can respond to normal inputs. Now, at 25 to 35%, I put it in the front of my thoughts. I'm not sure that this computer is logical. I'm not sure it's unlogical, illogical, illogical would be the correct word. Pretty sure there's no such word as unlogical. So it's, I don't know. I don't know. But I'm going to keep it in the front of my mind and then I'm going to start building my case. Just like a good attorney, I'm going to build my case and I'm going to say, this proved to me, this showed me the computer might not be thinking correctly. This showed me that the computer might not. Oh, I got three things that the computer, you didn't, you know, see how it adds up? Like on CSI? All right. And you've already done your CSI right. Where does all your diagnostics start? Battery. In the glove box. You got to go to the glove box and look for who worked on it last time. What did they do? CSI. You got to be like a, you know, you got to look at that forensics in a glove box. They might have a good tape too. So, <laughs> so at over thirty percent, I need to find out why it's high. I, I something's wrong. It could be the, it could be the crank sensor, the RPM sensor. It could be that this this Ford uh, isn't reading barrel correctly, and the Ford and uh, up to the last few model years inferred barrel, and that means guess. Inferred mean guess. My wife loves it when I go, I infer you're angry at me. And she goes, I'm going to slap that out of you. <laughs> okay, now I know you're angry at me. But at 30%, the computer's not calculating right. It could be a stupid computer. That, that, that computer could have dyed its hair blonde and turned stupid. What, are you all gay? <laughs> <laughs> I just did a partial blonde joke and you missed it. Jesus Christ. But it could be an input, couldn't it? Because if it doesn't get the right inputs. So that's why we're going to focus on the injector pulse width, which is huge. All right, so we had a two, 2005 GM38 liter, nine diagnostic codes for rich and lean and misfires. The scientist comes running over. Have you ever worked with scientists? Oh, we got one for you. We got to stop. Don't act like that in my bay. <laughs> don't, don't. Stay over there. Don't wave your hands around running at me. It's too scary. And I go, what up with that? And I go, oh, it's got rich and lean and misfire codes. I go, okay, that's, I'm excited too. Now, would you go back so I can turn around? I think four, I think four DTCs are valid. I think can be valid. I think four diagnostic trouble codes, I honestly think we can store that many and there's four related or unrelated problems. I don't like nine. I don't think nine's right. Did you ever get one with 14? 
<laughs> Stop it. Clear him and go away. I, what are you going to do? You know, and four is my number. At five, I suspect something up. Oh, what roll? I go, nah, I don't like five. But it's kind of close to four. I, I know you didn't do well in math, but five's kind of, isn't it, Frank? Or did you steal that shirt? No, I stole it. Okay. Does Frank know? Block learn. All right. We're going to talk about that at break, Frank. One, 28. <laughs> you got me, man. You just like dropped me in my drawers on that one. So at five, I go, uh, it's like 20 to 25% calculated load. I got to go, okay, this might be a factor later. I got to do something here. At seven DTCs, I go for the calculated load pit again. I go, man, I really want, and that's when I start dividing manufacturers from experience. That's when I start dividing manufacturers' experience. Ford seems to be the highest. I concur with you. I just didn't want to concur too early because you stole my thunder later on. So <laughs> from now on, you can just be quiet. Thank you. All right. And it was 87% at idle. We have nine codes, 87% at idle. Is this computer, does it have the ability to be logic? No. no. I got it. I... I <sighs> I don't want to be rude, but screw them codes. I don't even care if one of them's valid. I don't care. We're going to clear everything. And in many diagnostic classes, you might have heard me say that, there is no technical good reason to clear code. There is never, ever, ever a technical reason to clear code. And I believe that with all my heart. But what I'm saying now is, screw technical. It ain't making any sense. I got to watch this computer relearn this. I got to watch this computer go through this process it's going through. See this process? It just didn't pop up there. It went through something. It was normal, then it got a little too high and a little too high, and then it's way too high. And somebody, I'm thinking to myself, somebody told the computer that there was a hill and there ain't no hill. So it could have been the hill sensor. And the mill was on, of course, and it was a bad PCM. I mean, and I'm always surprised at a bad PCM. I just don't find that many bad PCMs. I find some that don't have the right power. I find some that don't have the right ground. I find some that doesn't have the right input. But I, I got to tell you, I don't find that many bad PCMs. You know? And PCMs do the same thing to my spinster muscle as it does to yours. You go, oh, they're so expensive. I hate to make that mistake. You know? So you kind of double check and check and double check. So the problem. It didn't match in, in our research. It, the codes were for rich and lean conditions, and I had a goofy computer. So we replaced the computer, and the code stayed away. So this is what we're trying to do here, is we're trying to take mode one and see where we can improve it. And in mode one, what, what is that? What's mode one? PIDs, right? PIDs. And we use PIDs all the time, and people use PIDs differently. Some people use PIDs wrong. Some people use them extremely super tech, and some people are falling be in between the, the way, and some people look at the same six tids, tid, uh, PIDs they always look at. They never expand their knowledge. Sir, you have a question? You can wait till later. No, I'm just kidding you. What, what's going on with your injector pulse width while you're getting all these variations of the, uh, of the percentage? That's a good question because... I'm going to tell you something, I never got that far. The fact that this and this was so strange, I never, I never got technical, I never got scrutinizing anything. I didn't, I, I'm, I'm thinking the big picture's bad. And the big picture, the big picture is RPM divided by maximum RPM times MAP divided by barometric pressure, and a computer deals with that. That's the big picture. And all I'm trying to get to so far is to verify that the big picture is right. And it was so far off, I, I never got that far. I'd love to be able to tell you, and I could probably hypothesize and lie to you, but then I'd have to remember that lie for later, and I'd screw it all up. <laughs> all right? So, you ever... Anybody here have an auto ingenuity? When, you, when you're on a Ford and you, and you plug it in, you say it's, it's a Ford, it's a red one, it's got black tires, blah, blah, blah. You, and you go, doesn't it go like one PID of 484, two PIDs, 484 PIDs! 484, that's a big number in Indiana. Like only half the state can count that high. I'm telling you that it's a big number. Now, are we going to be able to use all those PIDs? No. One thing you should do early on 